that we are in the in court in the case of State of Ohio v. Taquan Mathers, 2014-CR-106. The defendant is in the courtroom. He is accompanied by Attorney Robert Dixon and Arianna Terragatti. He is dressed in street clothes. The State of Ohio is represented by Assistant Attorney Generals Paul Scarcella and Brian Becker. At this point in time, I'm going to go through this agreement with you in court and on the record to show that you do understand it. If you at any time have any questions or if there's something you don't understand, you can ask your questions. You won't make me mad. I won't be upset because I need to be sure that you understand what you've agreed to. It has the caption of the case. It says, Plead Guilty to Amended Indictment and Waiver of Trial by Jury. It says that this document shall be completed by the prosecuting attorney, who is the Attorney General's office in this case, prior to the taking of a plea. The defendant shall initial each paragraph to indicate his understanding. Under A, it says your name is Taquan Mathers. Your date of birth is July 23, 1992. You have gone to school up to and including 11th grade. Can you initial that, sir? It says that you are represented by Counsel Robert Dixon and you are a citizen of the United States. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And Mr. Dixon has also been accompanied in this case, throughout this case, by Arianna Terragatti, who is seated to your right and Mr. Dixon is to your left. Is that correct? Yes. Do you understand everything so far? Yes, sir. No questions? No, sir. Okay. Under B, understanding of the charge. I've been advised by my attorney of all the facts and circumstances known to me about the charges made against me, and I believe that my lawyer is fully informed on such matters. I understand the nature of the charges against me and the possible defenses I may have. I am not under the influence of drugs or alcohol. During the last 24 hours, I have used the following medicines or drugs, and you wrote down none, and you also initialed that. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. So you fully understand that, correct? Yes, sir. And you've been in the Asheville County Jail, correct? Yes, sir. So you have not had access to any alcohol or drugs, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, C, plea agreement. Discussions were held between the prosecutor and my attorney, and the following plea agreement has been reached and approved by me. Counts 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 will be dismissed at sentencing. Then it says, 1, I understand that I was charged in the indictment with the offenses of, and I'm going to read through that. Count 1, that's now on page 2, an unclassified felony, 2903.01A, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, aggravated murder, 2929.04A5, course of conduct specification, 2941.145A, firearm specification, 3 year. Do you understand what's going on so far, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, count 2 says degree, the UF means unclassified felony, 2903.01B, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, aggravated murder, 2941.145A, firearm specification, 3 year, 2929.04A5, course of conduct specification. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count 3, unclassified felony, 2903.01A, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, aggravated murder, 2941.145A, firearm specification, 3 year, 2929.04A5, course of conduct specification. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count 4, 2903.01B, 
2903.01F, 2929.02A, <coughs> aggravated murder, 2929.04A5 for subconduct specification, 2941.145A, firearm specification, three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count 5, 2923.02. 2903.01A, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, attempted aggravated murder, 2941.145A, firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count six, unclassified felony, 2923.02. 2903.01D, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, attempted aggravated murder, 2941.145A, firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count eight. Felony of the first degree, 2911.11A1, 2911.11B, aggravated burglary, 2941.145A, firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Then it says at the end of page two, I understand that the prosecutor agrees to move to amend the indictment to reflect the following offenses. And then on the next page, count one, degree, felony of the first degree, the charge or specification is 2903.04A, 2903.04C, involuntary manslaughter. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. And then count three, a felony of the first degree, 2903.04A, 2903.04C, involuntary manslaughter, 2941.145A, firearm specification three years. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Then it goes on to state, I understand that if I enter a plea of guilty or upon the approval of the court of a plea of no contest or an Alford plea of guilty, the prosecutor agrees that I will not be prosecuted for the criminal acts listed below. And this is going to be a plea of guilty, correct, Mr. Dixon? That is correct, sir. It is not an Alford plea? It is not an Alford plea. Okay. Okay, count two, unclassified felony charges, 2903.01B, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, aggravated murder, 2941.145A, firearm specification three year, 2929.04A5, course of conduct specification. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count four, the unclassified felony, 2903.01B, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, aggravated murder, 2941.145A, firearm specification three year, 2929.04A5, course of conduct specification. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Count five, unclassified felony, 2923.02, 2903.01A, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, attempted aggravated murder, 2941.145A, firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count six, unclassified felony, 2923.02, 2903.01B, 2903.01F, 2929.02A, attempted aggravated murder, 
2941.145A, firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count seven, felony of the first degree, 2911.01A1, 2911.01C, aggravated robbery, 2941.145A, firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Count eight, felony of the first degree, 2911.A1, 2911.11B, aggravated burglary. I'm just going to reread that. 2911.11A1, 2911.11B, aggravated burglary. 2941.145A, firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Now the next paragraph, B, says guilty plea. I have reviewed and understand this plea agreement, and I ask the court to accept any motion of the prosecutor to amend the existing indictment. I knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily withdraw my former plea of not guilty and enter a plea of guilty to the following offenses. Count one, a felony of the first degree, 2903.04A, 2903.04C, involuntary manslaughter. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. And it would also apply the plea of guilty to count three, a felony of the first degree, 2903.04A, 2903.04C, involuntary manslaughter, and 2941.145A, firearm specification three year. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. It says, I further by this plea voluntarily waive a trial by jury or by the court. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. So just to review this paragraph D, you want to plead to count one, involuntary manslaughter. You want to plead guilty. Count three, to involuntary manslaughter with a firearm specification. You want to plead guilty to those two offenses, correct, with the firearm specification? Yes, sir. And you want to waive your right to a trial to the court or to a trial by jury, correct, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go to paragraph E. It says that you understand that a plea of guilty is a complete admission of your guilt and that if you plead guilty, you are giving up your right to a jury trial or a court trial where you could confront and have your attorney question witnesses against you and where you could use the power of the court to call witnesses to testify for you. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. And the power of the court to call witnesses, what that means is if your witnesses didn't show up, I would stop the trial and send sheriff's deputies out to find those witnesses and to transport them here to the courtroom so that they could testify. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. This paragraph goes on to say, state that you know at trial you would not have to take the witness stand and could not be forced to testify against yourself and that no one could comment if you chose not to testify and the jury could not infer you were guilty because you did not testify. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. This paragraph continues. It says you know that you are presumed not guilty of any crime at this time but that the presumption is nullified if you plead guilty. What that means is you're presumed not guilty but once you plead guilty then you're going to be found guilty. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, let's continue on in that paragraph. It says that you understand that you waive your right to have the prosecutor prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt by a trial before the judge or by a jury of your peers, which would be at least would be 12 citizens, that you further understand that if convicted at trial you would have the full right to have appeal but if you plead guilty you would have a very limited right to appeal your sentence within 30 days of your sentence. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Paragraph F says the effect of your guilty plea. You understand that if you plead guilty you will receive a sentence. The sentencing hearing may be today or continue to another date 
I'll stop there. My understanding is we've agreed that the sentencing will be at a later date, but we have not picked that date. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. And Mr. Scarsala, that was your agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, let's continue on. The court may refer you to the probation department to have a pre-sentence report prepared before sentencing. It is my understanding I am not going to do that. Is that your understanding, Mr. Dixon? Yes, Your Honor, we are not requesting the report. Okay, and Mr. Mathers, you did understand that, sir? Yes, sir. And that was your understanding, Mr. Scarsala? Yes, Your Honor. So that you understand that any recommendations are not binding on the court and that no promises or guarantees as to sentence have been made to you. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, this agreement goes on. Do you understand that if you, that you are now on felony probation or parole under a community, that if you are on felony probation on parole under a community control sanction under post-release control from prison, this plea may result in revocation proceedings and any new sentence could be imposed consecutively. Does that apply here? It does, Your Honor. Okay. And that he is currently serving a prison sentence. Okay. And he would sort of, he's not on post-release control or probation, but there is a prison sentence he's currently serving. That he was sentenced to, but he's in the county jail and would have to go down to the prison to complete that sentence. Correct. That's your understanding, Mr. Dixon? It is, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, under G, and you've had a chance, Mr. Dixon and Ms. Interrogati, to fully go over that provision with him? We have, Your Honor. Okay. Do you have any questions about that? No, Your Honor. So your lawyers have answered all those questions for you? Yes. Let's go to G. It says maximum penalty. Do you understand that the maximum penalty as to each count is as follows? Count one, felony of the first degree, involuntary manslaughter, 2903.04A, 2903.04C. The prison could be 11 years in prison. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Under count three, felony of the first degree, involuntary manslaughter, 2903.04A, 2903.04C, 2941.145A, firearm specification. The prison on the involuntary manslaughter would be 11 years maximum sentence, and there's a mandatory three-year sentence on the firearm specification. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. So it's consecutive sentences under paragraph H. Do you understand that the sentences for two or more offenses, even if the sentences are not mandatory, may be required by the court to be served consecutively, which means one after the other? Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Financial sanctions. It says you understand that court costs, restitution, and other financial sanctions, including fines, day fines, or reimbursements for the cost of any sanctions, may also be imposed upon you at sentencing. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Additional sanctions under section J. Do you understand that for the offense to which you are pleading guilty, the judge may not revoke your driving privileges or impose a driving suspension of no less than six months to five years? Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Let's go to the next page. Post-release control under paragraph K. It says in addition, a period of supervision by the adult parole authority after release from prison is mandatory in this case. If they sentence to prison for the offense after, it says after my prison release, you will have five years of control under conditions to be determined by the parole board. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. It says a violation of any post-release control rule or condition can result in a more restrictive sanction while released in increased duration of supervision or control up to the maximum term in re-imprisonment even though you have served the entire stated prison term imposed upon you by the court. If you violate conditions of supervision while under post-release control, the parole board could return you to prison for up to nine months for each violation for a total of one half of your original stated prison term. 
if the violation is a new felony, you could be sentenced for the new felony and receive a new prison term of the greater of one year or the time relate, remaining on post-release control. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. And then under section L, community sanctions, it indicates that you do understand that your sentence does have mandatory prison and you are not eligible to be sentenced to community control sanctions. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Uh, you, uh, you and your lawyers have indicated that underneath that it does not apply regarding community control under N, voluntary guilty plea. Pleading guilty is what you want to do. You have relied upon your attorneys for advice, but the decision to enter a plea of guilty is yours and not theirs. No threats have been made to you to induce you to enter a plea of guilty. No promises have been made to you as the sentence to be imposed by the court. And further, no other promises have been made to you to accept <clears throat> any part of this play agreement. Marcella has signed it. Mr. Mathers has indicated to me that he did sign it. Mr. Dixon and Ms. Terragotti, you did sign the original, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Mathers, do you have any questions whatsoever about this agreement? No, Your Honor. Do you fully understand it, sir? Yes, sir. And do you fully agree to all of the terms and conditions of this agreement? Yes. And do you want to give up all of those rights and plead guilty to the count one, which is involuntary manslaughter, and count three, involuntary manslaughter with a firearm specification? Yes, sir. And you understand that with those pleas, I would be required to sentence you to prison, sir? Yes, sir. And that's what you want to do here today, sir? Yes. And Mr. Mathers, you want to plead guilty to those offenses, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, the court, in reviewing everything, uh, will accept your plea, and I will find you guilty, and I will approve of this agreement. Mr. Mathers, you did sign, together with your lawyers, a waiver of trial by jury or judge. That agreement states that you, an open court, in the presence of your legal counsel, do hereby voluntarily waive and relinquish your constitutional right to have your case tried by a jury or by the judge of the court in which the case is pending. You have been fully advised by your lawyer in the court. However, he will be retained in custody. He was previously set upon, but there's no reason to continue that bond. Would you agree, Mr. Scarsella? Your Honor, with him serving a current prison sentence, it would be the state's request that he be returned to the DRC um, until an appropriate time the sentencing could be set. Okay. Any objection, Mr. Dixon? No, in fact, we join in that request, Your Honor. Okay, then that will be done. Um, so you'll start serving that one prison sentence, then we will be bringing you back for your sentencing hearing. So do you understand what's going on, sir? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions for me? Because it's probably going to be a while before you get to see me again. Okay. Anything further on behalf of the defense? No, Your Honor, thank you. Anything further on behalf of the state of Ohio? Officers, if you could take Mr. Mathers with you. And then everybody else will just stay in the courtroom until Mr. Mathers is done.